Single women living in Lake Chapala, Mexico. Hi, broadcasting not live from Mazatlan, Mexico. I'm Bill the Geek. This is the Bill Dallas Lewis channel, and we make videos about the joys of living in Mexico. Today, we introduce Savvy Jones from the USA. Savvy is having the time of her life living in Chapala, Mexico. Where did she come from? How does she use her time? Does she watch TV all day? What did she tell her family and friends before she made her move? You really want to watch the very end of the video because that's when Savvy is going to share with you what she calls the five F's. Things you need to think about before you tell anybody that you're moving to Mexico. You really got to check that part out. Buckle up. Okay, hello, Savvy Jones, and welcome to the Bill Dallas Lewis channel. How are you doing today? I am fabulous and just excited and honored to be here. So thank you, Bill. <laughs> oh, 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 you're very welcome. Uh, uh, we talked about, in fact, we talked uh, one week ago today about this interview. And now, where are you from? I'm originally from Michigan, Muskegon, Michigan. Oh, do they make cereal there? You know, they made cereal in Michigan, but it's in a town a little, a little, um, a little bit of ways called um, Battle Creek. So oh. you've got like Post and Kellogg and different things like that, that we have cereal made in Michigan for sure. Oh, okay. Now, uh, before you, now, now where do you live now? Currently, I live in Chapala, Jalisco, Mexico. Okay. Uh, okay, let, let me let me do something here real quick. Let me go over here and click a button. Okay. Okay, so you can see the map, right? I sure do. Uh, oh, oh, oh that's the wrong map. <laughs> well, that's the wrong map too. Uh oh. Oh, here it is down here. Ha ha. There oh, we go. There we go. Okay, so uh, there's Chapala mm -hmm. down there and Ahihik. Do you ever make it over to Ahihik? All the time. You know, they have a fabulous um, market on, on Wednesdays. And so to go over there and buy fresh fruit and different things that you would want to pick up, you can do that over there. So, yeah, I do get to Ahihik um, on a regular basis. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, tell us now, how did you ever zoom in on Mexico? Tell us about that. Well, you know, I have always loved Mexico from when I was a little girl, you know, when I would watch different television shows, anything to do with Mexico. If there was a character in the film, I was just drawn to them. And so even at a young age, I always told my mom, I said, I want to learn two languages, sign language and Spanish. And so that's kind of where my my desire first began to check out to check out Mexico. Okay, and do you speak Spanish? Un poco, un poco. I'm currently in a course by a gal by the name of Kim Ann. She um, has a program called Bloom in Spanish, and so I'm taking her first eight week course right now. Please leave a comment. Tell us what you think, and if you like the video, click the like button. And if you know some single woman that's thinking about moving to Mexico, click the share button. Okay, so so uh, now how old were you when you moved to Mexico? I was in my 50s. So I, you know, I once I um, I used I used to work for the government in Michigan. And so when I retired, I started looking for different things that I wanted to do. I knew I wasn't done. I still had a, um, a desire to you know, help other individuals. And so I started looking into coaching. And so I got my certification in several areas of coaching. And my instructor at that time told me, you, he called me DJ, you would be a good travel coach because he knew I loved to travel. And I had traveled to Mexico. I had been to Puerto Vallarta, fell in love with it. And I said, this is a place that I could really live. And so in 2021, 
I started looking for reasons to come back to Mexico. And the reason that I came was to get my TEFL certification from ITTO. And TEFL stands for Teaching English as a Foreign Language. I had seen a video um, by a lady by the name of Beverly. She, is, um, she has a YouTube channel called Miles and Coffee. And so I reached out to her because she was talking about this TEFL program. And once I spoke with her, I decided instead of going to New York to get the training or to Chicago to get the training, I'd already been there. I said, let me check out this place called Guadalajara, which is about 40 miles from Chapala. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Guadalajara, how close are you to the uh, Guadalajara International Airport? It's about, you know, you get different time frames. It depends on who your driver is, but it's about 40 <laughs> minutes to an hour away. Not very long at all. Okay. Okay. I'm going to correct you on that. The Guadalajara International Airport's like 20 minutes away from Chapala. It's oh, close. You know, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. It's closer than Guadalajara. Okay. So, well, anytime I've had to drive here in a cab, like I said, people tell me 40 minutes, but we always get here quicker. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Now, you, you, you were a nurse. Yes. Uh, tell tell us about that. What were you were like the director? You were the boss of all nurses in like uh, Eastern America, something like that, right? <laughs> well, I was actually the director of staff development. So the hospital was a psychiatric hospital run by the government of Michigan. And we had over 400 employees. So I was responsible for making sure that their training based on HIPAA and, and different um, uh, JACO, different governing bodies to make sure that the staff were competent. I had to make sure that those staff members got their annual training. And so that would include things like um, self, not self-defense, but um, we called it NAPI, um, non-abusive psychological and physical intervention training. So that if a patient became hostile or dangerous to themselves or to us, we had a soft way to get them back in control so that they were safe and that we were safe. And then there was also the annual training for your CPR and, and different educational things to make sure that people were on top of their game to be able to care for these psychiatric patients that we were taking care of. Okay. And when you were going to nursing school, uh, was was there anyone uh, kind of interesting that you went to school with? It, not, not, no, nothing other than the fact that when I was in nursing school, <laughs> my mother was in nursing school. She went to nursing school for LPN and I went on to get my registered nurse license. So when I graduated from high school and entered into college, my youngest sister, because I'm the oldest of nine kids, she was in school full time. So that allowed my mother to return to school. So we both were in college going to school at the same time. So it was pretty cool. Wow. Wow. That's we have a new Facebook group. It's called Mexico Expats Bill Dallas Lewis. Come be a part of the group. Share your ideas, your questions, your videos. You can find a link to our new Facebook group in the description below. That's phenomenal. Now, so so you like had you visited Mexico prior to Puerto Vallarta? Had you had you visited Mexico before other than just seeing people or Mexicans on TV? Once, once my um, my uh, boyfriend and I were traveling to California and he had been in the military. So he said, well, we're right here at the border. Let's cross over over the border. And that way you can say you've been to Mexico. And that was it. And I really believe that that was the seed that planted my desire to at some point in time, come back. <laughs> ah, ah. And uh, tell us about the Mexican people. I mean, you're, I lived in Chapala for, I don't know, four years and I lived in Guadalajara for four years. I mean, what, well, you know, what, uh, uh, what, what, what's it like? I mean, your Spanish isn't that good. You're in a brand new country, away from far away from Michigan. It doesn't snow anymore. <laughs> what is it like? What what does it do to your mental state? You know, for me, because what, in Chapala is you probably have found 
yourself, Bill, is a very w warm and, and welcoming community. And when they saw that I was trying to learn the language, I may say things that are backwards or you know the, the verb text may not be correct, but when they see me trying to speak the language, they'll smile and say, no, 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 senorito, no, 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 chica, say it this way. And so they correct me. And so that was really, really welcoming to me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in Chapala, you do have some um, individuals who speak a little English. And so like at the Mar Mercado, when I go to the, um, the uh, supermarket in Central, I have a favorite guy that works in there that says, you speak Spanish, I speak English. We, we teach each other. So it, it's, it's really, <laughs> really great. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Are, are, it, it, now, in Chapala, uh, you, you don't see too many Americans in Chapala. I mean, you, you do see some in Ahihik. They're everywhere. Yes. But, but Chapala is very, uh, very different than that. Uh, and who it do you... Really is. Who do you live with? Or do you live alone in a house? Do you have an apartment? Who, who? I have, your... I have a very unique situation here. So back in 2021, when I made the decision that I was going to come to, um, to Guadalajara to get my training, during that time, just before taking off, I went to a summit called the, the Exodus Summit. It's led by um, a woman by the name of Stephanie Perry. And so... In that summit, they were breaking people into different groups because we were women, black women who want to move abroad. And so there was one specific group that was for Guadalajara, Ch Jalisco, Chapala area. And so there was a woman in there. She's a social worker, a financial social worker. Her name is Sonia Paloyan. And I saw how, how, how dedicated she was and how she wanted to help other individuals do this thing, get, you know, move out of the U.S. I DM'd her while we were in the session and I said, Sonia, if you take the lead, I'll be your co-pilot and we'll formulate this group so that we can help other women move abroad. And so we formed the group called Mexida Sojourners. And that's how I got to Chapala because Sonia was already here. And I reached out to her. She says, you should come on down, Savvy. And we've got, um, I'm living right next to a historical um, restaurant called the QQ. And we have a room available in this casa that we live in. It's actually a refurbished hotel. And so why don't you just come on down? So I came down, spent the night in that vacant suite. The next morning I said, I have not slept like this. And I don't know when, I feel like I'm home. We go live every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Click the subscribe button. Come join us in the fun. Bring your ideas, your questions, your experiences of living in Mexico. And so I got an invitation from the group that was already here to come and live in what we call Casa, Ive Casa Ivida, uh, de Vida. So which means um, Casa Arte y Vida, which means life and, and art. So on the, on the first level is Sonia and I, and we share a partially outdoor kitchen. She has a suite one, I'm in suite two. And then on the second floor, we kind of have the same setup, a lady from Argentina, and another lady is from um, uh, Argentina, um, Australia. And they share a kitchen between their two units. And then I'm up here on the third floor. This is our community area. We have a chef's kitchen. Um, we, we have artist studios up here because all of us are artists. And um, if we don't want to cook, we just hire a chef to come in. So it's like <laughs> the Golden Girls on steroids. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, now, are you enjoying yourself? Are you enjoying Oh, my life? gosh. I love it. I love, you know, my, um, I have a, a male partner who is going to be joining me in June. And I'm always telling him about the activities that and he thinks I'm a party animal. And it's not. It's just that we have so much community, so much love, so much support. You know, if somebody is cooking to, or, you know, at their house, they always invite people over. So I love Chapala. And it's not just Americans that come to the party or come to the fiesta or the gathering. We have Cuban. We have Jamaican. We have um, uh, European. We have Blacks like myself. I mean, it's it's just a beautiful community. Oh, now now tell me, uh, when you before you came, when you were in Michigan and 
you had the thought, well, I think I'm going to go on down to Mexico. Did you tell all your friends and family or immediately? No, no, <laughs> no. So I'm a believer that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so when I made my decision to go, I didn't want any naysayers in my ear. And I didn't want people speaking things into the universe that may interfere with my safe travels abroad. So, and I call it the big five F, family, friends, fallacies, um, finances, and, and fear. You know, I, I just didn't want any of that interfering. I didn't want any of those obstacles interfering. So when I got here and I'm going through school, of course, I started posting things. I created a YouTube channel called Savvy Soldier, and I started posting things there and in Facebook. And so I get a call from my daughter, and she says, Mom, where are you? I said, oh, baby, I'm in Mexico. Well, well, well what are you doing there? I said, oh, I decided <laughs> to move here. <laughs> oh. Oh, that had to be a shocker for them, it huh? It was, it was. Ah. And of course, all lot, like I said, you know, the, the fears that they have, the misunderstandings that they have rise up. And they started saying things, you know, like, well, what about the cartels? I said, well, first of all, you've got this 60-year-old woman, um, uh, uh, pleasingly plump. I don't think they want me. I don't fit that profile. And that's not the lifestyle I, I have. I didn't have that in Michigan. I'm, I'm not somebody that does drugs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason for me to have any dealings with the cartel. No more than I did when I was in the U.S. I didn't have any dealings with the mafia. I mean, they still don't know where Jimmy Hoffa is. So what, <laughs> what about that? Yeah, right, right. Um, so uh so what about people that are thinking about moving to mexico or want to visit mexico but you know they're scared of the cartel or they're hesitant to 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 come down what would you say to these people what did oh what advice would you give them to be smart yeah you know if you look, I don't know what news channel you watch in the U.S., but what all did you hear that was going on in the news in the U.S.? I mean, there's danger everywhere in the world, but you have to be smart. You have to you have to use common sense or what my mother used to call mother wit. You just have to be wise. So I don't I'm not out after, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning, walking down a dark street, <laughs> you know, um, I listen to the locals. And if they say that there's an area that's not probably a good place for Americans or women to go, then I don't go there. Mm -hmm. And most of the times I am surrounded by other kind, loving people. And that's the way I was in the U.S. And that's the way I live abroad. Okay. Now, um, you have several businesses that you operate, I think. I do. I do. And uh, we're going to talk about one of them in a future video, but can you kind of summarize? Uh, and, and when we talked last week, you called them side hustles. Can you talk about your size hu side hustles and why you think they're kind of a necessary thing to do? Absolutely. So I changed the name from side hustle to slide <laughs> hustle. <laughs> and the reason I did that is because when I, when I was working, I, I always had I always had something that I was doing on the side because I think I'm a workaholic. Now that I've moved to Chapala, I, I am in recovery. But um, the, the one thing that I don't believe is going to always be around is Social Security. And if it is, it's going to be a lot different than what it is right now. So in my coaching business, I work with baby boomers and late bloomers with an entrepreneurial bent to create a slide hustle as you're approaching retirement. You wanna, you wanna put this in place before you retire so that when you get to that point and you retire, you can slide into this thing that you've been building on the side, something that you're good at. People, you have gifts, you have talents, you have skills, you have knowledge, and you can monetize that if you set it up in the right way. So that's what I do with, with my baby boomers and late bloomers who, haven't reached actualization as according to Maslow's hierarchy, you still have a desire, you have a burning, just gut feeling that there's just more for you to do. And you want to do it. You want that that fulfillment. And so that, that was me. And so that's what I teach other individuals to do. And so that business is savvy boss solutions. Let's create a solution that you can have the type of income that you want, that you need to live 
the fulfilled lifestyle that you want to live wherever in the world that may be. And so I work with individuals to do that. That is one of the, of the slide hustles. Okay. And what are the other ones? Well, we, in our, um, which we, we're going to talk about in a future video, we have a bed and breakfast, Sojourners Vista del Lago, here in San Nicolas uh, de Ibarro. And in that, um, in that setting, we have retreats for individuals. Like I said, we're artists. I'm a writer. Sonia Faloyan is a um, textile artist. And then we set up different types of retreats for women to come to. Now, this January, we had our first Jumpstart Your Soul Journey retreat. So we work with individuals to help them have a better relationship with money. Because what we have found is a lot of individuals that get to our age, they, they, they don't have enough money to do what it is that they want to do. They weren't taught it in school. It was taken out of the school by rich people that did not want people to think they wanted people to work. So we have to come, we have to get out of that thing and start thinking about different things that we can do to build our own entrepreneurial empire instead of that of someone else. Okay, very well put. Now, also, you're a published author. Is that right? Yes, I, I write devotionals and I have co-labored with other um, writers to do that. And so that is one of the spaces that people can come down here. If you're a writer, we have a space for you where if you want to work on a project or if you want to bring down a small group of individuals, you can do that as well. OK. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna keep up with you in the future. See what you're doing, like about a year, six months from now. But uh, is there anything that I didn't bring up that I should have brought up that you would like to share with people? You know, I think we've covered it pretty much. Um, I would love for individuals to follow me on my YouTube channel, Savvy Soldier, and that Soldier is spelled S O U L J A R. And that's because I'm an individual. I'm a soul within this vessel that I'm on the earth in. And I, my, my desire is just to serve people, to help people get better at whatever it is that they want to do. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And, and we'll, we'll be sure to hook up with you in the future. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Bill. It's been my pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Savvy, for joining us and sharing all of your experiences. And uh, we have a follow-up video about Savvy's new bed and breakfast right outside of Chapala. So we have many more videos to come. Click that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.